moving vlog is progressing and finally getting somewhere, we are working on our set table now. So the set table has been holding us up on everything. It's been holding up. Here's the problem. It's all one big pipeline and the set table is what we need to start doing live streams. And the live streams are what we need to start building production systems because I want to stream the building of the production systems, but we need the production systems to do more work. So a table is holding us up right now, everything. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Corsair Strafe RGB Mark II mechanical gaming keyboard. The Strafe Mark II uses Cherry MX switches, available in MX Red and MX Silent, and uses the elevated keycap design that has become part of Corsair's keyboard identity. Elevated keycaps make the keyboard much easier to clean with a blast of compressed air and limit dirt buildup. The keyboard use a metal body design and have received praise from us in the past in old reviews for high build quality. Learn more about the Corsair Strafe Mark II at the link in the description below. Uh, so we're going to build that today. We have our autonomous.ai legs in. That's this right here. So we've got, I think this is, they have two models. This is, I think, the business model, which has two motors in it. So this was provided by Autonomous, and I'm hoping it's good because it's supposed to be a raising and lowering desk. And the point of that for us is going to be to put this thing over here, the table we've been working on, on those legs. And then the table will be uh, going kind of in the corner over there. And we're on the shotgun mic right now, so you're going to have to work with me on the volume and the audio. But the table will go over there. And being on raising and lowering legs, it's just, it's, it's uh, all done electronically now instead of our old set table, which was a little wobbly, as many of you complained back in the day. And that was wobbly because it was actually a height adjustable table. We never used the height adjustment because it was a huge pain in the ass. You had to adjust four legs, it was inaccurate, and it wobbled like crazy. So I'm hoping their solution works because what we want is to be able to raise and lower the table for different B-roll shots of products and just because it'd be a really useful feature for working in general. So we're gonna attach those legs to this thing. This is the bottom. So we've been working on staining polyurethane, sanding everything on the top side, which is currently on the bottom. Uh, we're gonna attach the legs here today. And then in addition to building the table, we are also working on finalizing some of the production room initial layout and the test room is now working. So we'll show you some of that in progress uh, testing and we're starting to build test benches too. So that'll be all the topics for today's moving vlog, if not some extra stuff in there as well. So the table legs I requested from autonomous.ai, if you wanna visit their site, we'll have a link below to the specific model we're using. Hopefully it's good, so I can recommend that you buy it. We'll find out towards the end of this video. Uh, so the, the table legs we're using, it's the version two of their smart desk. Version three of the smart desk has a touch screen that I believe allows you to quickly order fast food from your table. Now, uh, I, I remember when EverQuest 2 in the early 2000s added slash pizza to the game and it allowed you to fast order pizza from within EverQuest. And uh, based on the responses to that action, I, there's, there's a limit to my laziness. Raising and lowering the chair electronically, that's okay. I think, I think once I start fast food ordering from my furniture, there's a problem. It's a cool feature, but uh, that's, it's too much for me. You're too advanced autonomous. We can't, we can't handle that much technology here. So what we are doing uh, is going to be working with these two things. And if you actually look at the bottom of it, okay, so if we pull that off, you will see the motor, pretty big motor. I don't remember the exact weight capacity of this one, but it can support a bigger table. So we're going to use a six foot ish table. I think it's uh, 74 by 30 for our table. There's your motor, there are two of those, one in each leg. So that should be sufficient for raising even really heavy cases like a, I don't know, Dark Base Pro 900 or something like that. Something that's big and 50 pounds and has a lot of glass. And what are the other parts? Two legs. Uh, right, so this is all the mounting hardware. We have zip ties and stuff. I don't know if that's for cable management or something else. And then we've got the support bar that goes under the table and should also help stabilize it, plus whatever this is. So I think it's time to start building it. 
and I, I don't really want to work on it alone. So I'm going to recruit Andrew from behind the camera. We'll build it, we'll time lapse some of it maybe, and get it on the table, and hopefully we have a functional set table, finally, because it's holding up everything right now. Okay, uh, Andrew, I need your help with this at this point. Hey everyone, welcome to another Hardware News Recap. This is our new set table. All right, everyone, we are testing both the table and my workers' comp insurance all in one go. It's definitely moving slower. Motor's probably getting a little hot. But uh, it is working. How's that feel? I was just gonna, just up into the ceiling. It's just a smasher, a smasher. All right, see ya. Very nice. All right, Autonomous, you've impressed me. Thanks for sending them over. Uh, we'll talk about this more in the morning, probably. But for now, this, this wasn't enough work for now. The table took like two weeks. So this table was, I was kind of back and forth on it a lot because we did, a really shiny gloss originally and it, it looked pretty cool but it looked too glossy like it was it was like a mirror so then i i sanded everything off all the way up to 3500 grit i haven't polished it yet i'm gonna polish and buff next but right now it's kind of like a weathered workshop table like it's got some of the richness of tone is gone and some of the stain in the areas where it was not level and there wasn't enough polyurethane, uh, some of the stain has been removed, which we could go over that and fix it. But I kind of like it because it, it looks like it's been used and a little beat up uh, and it's going to workshops that ultimately. So it's kind of cool like that, but I don't know, we're gonna make another one anyway. Autonomous sent two of these sets and the second one will probably, I don't know if it'll be used for the live stream set or just for like a workstation or a test bench or what. But man, that is awesome raising and lowering functionality. That's gonna be so nice. Also will be very useful uh, for when we have to move again in the future because you can just lower it, smash it down. So yeah, I was really uncertain about this table and I put two weeks of work into it. I redid the entire thing once. So we had it done and then sanded it all down and redid it, didn't like it and did it again. Uh, a lot of work sanding, so really happy it turned out pretty decent and uh, looks good. It looks like looks like a set piece for a workshop because a lot of you like the industrial look of our set and this will fit in perfectly with that. I think the next thing is just we'll do the, the next table at some point. Maybe that one will be glossier, I don't know, but I got to polish and buff this still and the uh, table should be done. Oh, no. Dang, that's cool. Yeah. Man. Quick interruption to all the other stuff we're doing. We got some stuff in the mail, and this comes from a, a viewer. I think it's from Total Windup. Thank you very much for sending this. So this is on loan to us from the viewer. Total Windup, I, I think you've sent us some stuff in the past. We have some viewers or readers who will occasionally send things for us to review that we didn't get in from the manufacturers. And this is a Threadripper 2. 2990WX, I think is the full name of it. So we're looking forward to, to working on this one. Patrick has been working on some CPU testing stuff that, uh, that is in preparation for this. So we're gonna start testing this pretty soon. The, uh, I will say the packaging got in a discussion with some other reviewers and PR in the industry on Facebook. Uh, they were really in love with this packaging. And I gotta say, I, I disagree. I think it's a waste of of consumer money, but either way, there's a CPU inside that's definitely worth testing, even if the box is a bit superfluous. And uh, I, I mean, it's just, it's just gonna end up in a landfill for about two million years anyway. So not a fan of the box, but don't care. The CPU is pretty cool. We'll be testing that very soon. So we're just gonna go through a couple of the other things we got in. This is from Silverstone. 
So these are monitor arms. They sent us three of these. I think it's just called Arm 11 SC. So this, or Arm 1. Arm 1 single LCD interactive arm. Uh, so yeah, we're going to mount these in the production room probably. We have two cheap monitor arms for 1080p small panels in the testing room. Those are in use already for thermal benches. And the, it helps us get more out of the space because it actually being able to push them aside is a huge advantage. Uh, so these are much heavier duty than the ones that we got and they will support heavier monitors. That's a big thing for us. Uh, so we're gonna mount some of these in the production room. And then other than that stuff, we got a couple of other things in. I'll, I'll walk you around the place, show you what we got in, but this is all done now. So the uh, video set, all the lights are, they're not really where they're supposed to be, but uh, when it's all done. So we just filmed our first video here. It was the corrosion video versus liquid metal. And it's pretty much done. Table's great. We're really happy with the table. I guess we built that earlier in this video, actually. So the table's in, and we moved this light from back in this corner over here to up on the table, and then we're going to have to like put some stuff in front of it to hide the legs a bit. But that gets it out of the shot, so it won't be quite as strong of a light, but it's still uh, a good rim. And then we have a hand light up there that's stuck on the pole. It's never going to come off. Uh, so that's up there. And I, I think that's it for the lighting. The table's pretty damn cool though. Like we just, we have presets now. So this is pretty sweet. Uh, we have use cases for this. We'll perhaps show one of them in the future. And uh, right now it's just pre-programmed. We set a couple of profiles where I hit the button over here. We can show a B-roll shot of it at some point. So that's the autonomous part of it, the, as in the company. You hit the button that's pre-programmed that it goes down to a certain height. So right now this is at, I think it's going to 25 inches, 25.5 inches. And if I hit the other button, it goes up to 50. And then if I hit one, it just comes straight up to our A-roll set height, which is really cool. So if Andrew needs to adjust it for B-roll or something, just so we don't have to screw around with reorienting the camera, it takes forever on the dolly it's on, we can just raise it. And then when I'm ready to go, I hit one and it goes to the, to the A-roll height, or you can manually adjust too. So really sweet table, pretty happy with it, happy with how the wood turned out. Got the mod mat on here, so we're good to go. Let's check out some of the other stuff. So here's a small thing we did in one of the earliest moving vlogs, we, Keegan put in a bunch of foam between the window and the wall to damp some of the noise coming from the hallway. Worked really well. And we have a problem with this door where the door book is from what the, contractor we brought out told me is slightly ajar not something we can fix without some demolition and it's I mean it's it's not worth it so uh, so we had some noise creeping in from the top corner because it's not perfectly flush we put in some foam and uh, the foam lines it completely door still closes properly all that stuff but the foam really helps out with noise just like it did in the other corner so small stuff for noise at this point as far as you guys are concerned, it's, it should be completely fine. You're not going to hear anything. So it's really more for us because we could hear it more than the mics and pick up sometimes. But we got some other stuff done too. For this room, Patrick's been pretty hard at work in here. This is the testing room. We're still looking, by the way, for, I just noticed there's, there's still more echo in this room than all the other ones. We're still looking for some wall art and stuff like that. So if you didn't see it in our news video, we posted a PO box you can send stuff to. We're specifically looking for like, old computer hardware advertisements from a long time ago. Like if you have any 100 megabyte hard drive ads or old, old, old CPU ads like 20, 30 plus years ago, we'll take them if you got old magazines uh, so we can frame them and put them on the walls because it's the walls are kind of barren right now. But anyway, maybe we'll pop up the PO box or something like that if you want to send something along. There's no guarantee it'll make it in a video. I don't know how much stuff we're gonna get. It, it might be just so much that we can't put them all in videos or we might not get much at all. So uh, if you have anything that's like computer history though, and you definitely don't need it and you have no sentimental attachment, send it along and we'll, uh, we'll probably put it on the wall or something. So anyway, Patrick's been at work on this stuff. We have two identical CPU test benches. Right now, the thing we are doing is testing the video card. So we're doing our, our test suite on one card and then we're gonna switch it for the other one and do it again. And if there's no variance and the performance is the same, 
then the cards are functionally the same and we can run the tests in parallel on Intel and AMD at the same time and Intel will later get one of these benches as well. But the, the concern is that not all GPU silicon is created equal. So if one clock slightly higher, that throws off the results, not valid. Uh, I really hope they're close because if they are, we can run two CPU tests at a time, which would be huge for us. It'd save a lot of time. So if they're not equal, then I don't know, I guess we'll, we'll switch cards and just use one. But anyway, that's the CPU benches. So two of those, pretty sweet. Uh, the monitors, we've had this one a long time now. I think AMD sent this one over for free sync testing or something a couple years ago. But this is an Asus MG279Q. So it is a 144 hertz, 1440p monitor. We're using this because for CPU testing, we're never going to 4K, at least not anytime soon because 4K is a GPU test. Uh, 1440p we do though, that's still valuable. So it's great for that. It's an IPS panel, looks nice. High refresh is nice. And uh, in terms of displays, we now have two of them. So Asus sent along a second one, thank you Asus for that, so that we can have two identical displays on the bench. Uh, so two of the MG 279Q monitors, or 279Qs, and uh, really looking forward to getting these in use. So that's those. We have two other Asus monitors that I bought used up there. Not sure what we're going to use them for yet. They're 1080p, so maybe just workstation monitors. And then over here behind me, Patrick's been working on the uh, Ryzen Tech Ophion case that we saw at Computex. So this is a mini ITX case right here. And it's a hot box. It's not a cool case. Looks interesting, but we'll have a review on that hopefully sort of soon once we figure out all the, all the testing stuff. Oh, and he plugged in that Asus keyboard that they sent along previously as well, which is actually kind of an interesting keyboard, I'll be honest. But I have not used it, so I don't know if it's any good. But I think you can replace the plate up here if you have a 3D printer. Anyway, so the case test has been busy, the case test bench. <clears throat> CPU test bench has been busy. The cooler testing, I'm going to start back up again soon. I tore these down. This was for the one-year liquid metal aging test. Next up is going to be air coolers. So I've been wanting to do this since December of 2017. We can finally do a pretty big air cooler roundup with a bit of a GM twist to it. I won't reveal what that is yet, but both of these will be in use for that. And then I can just assign one monitor to each bench. So these are those cheaper monitor arms I mentioned uh, where I can just set this one up to run on this bench, this one up to run on that bench, and that will be very productive. So that's the plan there. Nothing's going on here right now. I need to clean off some of that for case building, I think is the plan, which we like this because right under a light, so it's good for building systems. Power supply testing is on hold presently while we wait for Patrick Stone to have some availability to advance it. Fan testing, if you've been waiting for fan testing, we do have that, you can see the wind tunnel back there, or really it's, it's a flow tunnel, not a wind tunnel. So Corsair, one of their thermal engineers uh, has been helping me troubleshoot an issue I had with our custom PCB for fan testing. And he was able to figure out all the problems that I had with it that had me stuck for the last several, like five months now. So he figured it out, he fixed it, he just put it in the mail, that's on the way back to us and we'll be able to finally start doing fan testing, but GPUs are gonna slow us down now. Speaking of, we can go over and look at the GPU test setup too for RTX. Still a mess by the way. Uh, we need to get like Paul from Paul's Hardware to come out here and help us figure out how to make an organization blog that gets 100,000 views, wherein we break down boxes and organize. He's an expert at it. I don't know how he does it. I like the videos too, by the way. That's not a knock on Paul. They're good. So this room's starting to get interesting. Uh, these were just, we just potted these, waiting for them to drain a bit. This is not going to permanently be on a plate, it'll move eventually. So we potted those, uh, just, just to make it a bit nicer in here. This one will probably move over to the video set in the background on the shelf at some point. I need to drill a hole in the bottom for drainage. And uh, we have other, another plant on the table that you probably saw earlier. So yeah, that's just kind of nice. <laughs> nice to have some, some life in here. And then for non-life, we have computers. So this is our GPU test bench. First one I've set up here. First, first non-cooler bench I set up here. 
there's no RTX in here. You're not seeing anything special behind the scenes. I'm sorry. It's just a 1080. But I'm setting it up. Everyone knows we're going to be testing RTX soon. So setting it up for a brand new suite of games. Some of the old ones are coming back. And uh, it's nice because the GPU bench is next to where I'm going to be sitting once I build the production system. So I can turn, start a test, and then turn back and do some work. And for that, we have, uh, I set up an ultra wide that I bought. So there's a Dell ultra wide I bought, uh, used. This is an old Dell 16 by 10 monitor. So I find that the, the ultra wides are actually not that great for real estate because you can fit three things, but it takes a lot of time to manually size them. So two monitors for my setup finally, and maybe a third for some other stuff. But uh, yeah, so that'll be my station. We need to do a live stream and build all the computers soon. Haven't set a date on that yet. Hoping to do a multi-camera live stream. But that's the progress for this room. One more room to look at. So the storage room filled in pretty fast. I, we have, for example, three trays of Ryzen processors down here and a bunch of trays of memory. Video cards are all stood up for the most part. We're gonna be adding in five more of the yellow video card stands up here, up here. I might add some over here. I don't know, we got a lot of video cards. Uh, CPUs are all in, memory's on the other side, that's all in, so lots of stuff. And what we needed was a swap space shelf. So we just installed that today. Patrick and Andrew worked on that. And uh, I mean, in here I've got like liquid coolers, air coolers, motherboards, 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 dead motherboards, cases, cases everywhere, to be reviewed shelf. <clears throat> and there's stuff on that side too. And then the new shelf, last shelf was built today. Uh, so it's just a six foot wide one. But I think the plan is the bottom will be stuff that needs to go. So it's stuff that we're giving away to local friends or something like that we're using in our own systems because we're going to run out of space, obviously. So stuff that needs to go will go here. Having a special place for it will force me to cycle stuff into it so that we can then cycle stuff out. And I don't know, maybe we'll just like leave it there and it might be a system of like, if you work here and you see something there that you want, you can take it or something like that. Uh, otherwise, we'll find someone else to take it. So that'll be getting rid of. And then I don't know what we're going to put on here yet, but I'm positive we'll fill it up pretty quickly. So that's the upgrade. Also, there's a vacuum over there. but And GPUs are going to be really occupying my time for the next couple of weeks. So uh, it's going to be a busy, busy few weeks for us. But thank you for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more, and you should. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one or our full Gamers Nexus logo shirt. We restocked a lot of them recently. I think we have a couple of women's shirts coming in soon, too, for the graph logo design as well. So check out store.gamersnexus.net for that stuff. That would have been funny if it collapsed right now. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help out there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. Take that, Dimitri's plant.